What's up dudes, Max here, back with a pretty big update for Injustice 2 because, as you've been seeing with the reaction videos, there is news and information on this game almost every single week along with character reveals. Over the past week we did get the reveal that Cyborg is going to be in the game, he has been redesigned heavily, especially based on the latest stuff we've been seeing that he's going to look like in the movies. His in-game appearance has a much different resemblance to some other modern day characters, and I kind of like him a lot more, but Cyborg, not a lot of people were excited for because everyone already knew that that was going to happen. However, along with it, IGN got some exclusive hands-on footage of Swamp Thing, as well the Netherrealm guys did a Watchtower stream highlighting Wonder Woman as well as Harley and going over the big changes of those characters because some stuff has fundamentally changed even though they're keeping a bit of their moveset from the first game. But first and foremost, let's talk about Swamp Thing because he was one of my top five most anticipated characters for the game, and holy crap, is he looking fantastic. Your crimes will not stand. Who are you to judge me? This planet's true guardian. I've said it multiple times in the past that I'm a little critical of Injustice 2. Not all the characters in the game have me super excited to play as them. And at the end of the beta, I only really liked Batman. But there is a couple that really fascinate me in the game right now. And it's Swamp Thing, especially that we've seen more of his gameplay. And the little bit we've seen of Robin and there's still nothing to be heard of that guy, even though he was introduced before Swamp Thing. So I'm very curious the direction they're going with the Damian Wayne version of Robin, and I, I kind of want to see what they do with his gameplay because that character is doing flips and chucking stars and doing Melina teleports. It, it looks very awesome, it looks very flashy, and it looks right up my alley. Well, let's talk about something more tangible, which is Swamp Thing, because IGN had their 12 minutes of gameplay. The full unedited video of this gameplay is actually up on IGN, so if you want to check it out, the link in the description below, but just talking from just aesthetically, Swamp Thing might possibly be one of my favorite characters in the game so far next to the very little we've seen of Gorilla Grodd, mostly because he takes on a very beast-like appearance similar to Grodd, while a lot of the other characters currently in the game are monster men like Atrocitus or dudes in suits or chicks in suits. So many of those characters are very mocap heavy and their animations are kind of stifled to limited human motion, while Swamp Thing and Gorilla Grodd just look freaking crazy. Like, these characters, and especially with Swamp Thing, are doing things where they're dipping under the ground where they're dashing, his arms are morphing and transforming into plants, he's kicking things off the floor, he's calling in different doubles of himself to come in behind and grab the opposition. This stuff looks freaking awesome. And I was initially worried that Swamp Thing was going to be a character, considering his rumored playstyle being a zoner grappler, to something like Grundy, potentially, even though Grundy was kind of short range, but it doesn't look to be that way. If anything, this character seems to still be combo heavy, and he has command grabs that are extremely similar to Conra in Killer Instinct. His vines reach across the screen in multiple directions, and I'm not too sure if they are raw grabs, meaning that you might have to not be blocking to get hit by it, or if you are blocking, you will still get grabbed by this thing, which I'm very curious about. In Killer Instinct, Conra can literally grab you from across the screen, even if you are blocking, but there is a bit of startup to that stuff, and it looks to be similar with Swamp Thing right now. The meter burn moves have you spinning around and doing all this kind of damage. I feel that Swamp Thing at the moment can literally win a match just based on his command grab damage alone. However, they have said that a lot of the damage values during the Wonder Woman and Harley stream are completely, completely not set in stone. So I wouldn't take it too seriously. It's just an interesting thing to mention that he's dropping 25% every time he lands a command grab. But being a command grab character, I was worried that this was going to stifle his combo potential. We still don't know what his ability moves are, which ones are actually in this gameplay that aren't going to be represented when the base character comes out, and which moves will indeed be modified by gear, but based on the gameplay alone, he has some pretty good combo potential, and his combos are doing good damage, even though, like I said, those damage values are completely iffy right now. His combo structure does seem to be a little bit different from the other characters. He doesn't usually go for a launcher of some kind into wall bounce, into a jumping normal, into an ender of some kind. He does do things a little bit different simply because a lot of his moves that transform his arms into trees and limbs and all this other stuff 
stuff where he calls in other Swamp Things out of the ground and they grab the opponent. It's just looking really good, and it's all flowing very well. Swamp Thing, just based on this gameplay, is absolutely going to be a character that I pick up the first day this game is out, along with Robin in consideration of, I just, I just want to know what I can do with these characters and figure stuff out. So overall, I am extremely happy what they have done with Swamp Thing, and I think he looks absolutely fantastic. The other big thing to mention is that the couple of other characters they did the stream for recently, which was Harley and Wonder Woman, have gone through a few changes, and I kind of wanted to talk about that, because the majority of Harley's moveset, for example, is very similar. She does that low dive, which goes into a cartwheel, and then she can shoot her guns or go into different transitions. But there is some stuff that has changed kind of critically with Harley, and that's the way her overall trait works, where she calls in the two hyenas. Now she actually takes a bone out, and depending on which direction you press with the trait, you can call both of them at one time, you can call one, or you can call the other. They act as like overheads or lows, and that stuff actually looks pretty cool. That's a good way to spice things up, because Harley in the original, I can, I can barely remember what her trait was. I remember there was a huge amount of randomness to it, and it wasn't very useful. Even in the week of Harley, I barely ever remember using it at all. So that was a very smart move on their end, but a lot of the stuff she's doing just overall in combat looks pretty similar to Injustice 1. Like I said, some animations have changed, some combo structure is a little bit different, but the big change is her trait and how you're gonna set up that trait because it's just gonna be way more useful now. Wonder Woman, however, has gone through a huge amount of changes compared to the first version she had in Injustice, and a lot of stuff you can definitely tell that many moves are inspired and themed around the new Wonder Woman movie, which which is a nice touch. She has this progressing shield move, but the biggest change is the fact that Wonder Woman no longer has to focus around the stance that has the sword or the stance that has the lasso. They are all integrated into the character directly now, so she has some moves that use the lasso and some moves that use the sword, meaning that she gets access to kind of the best of both worlds from the previous game, which is a good call because there were good benefits about each one of those from previously, and right now she feels like a more complete character with access to both weapons. The big change is that her trait now modifies different aspects of her special moves. Also, it gives her abilities that she was missing from the first game. You might remember she had an air dash that was immediately available and you didn't have to do anything, you just press forward, forward in the air. That's actually gone now. Now, to get the air dash, you actually have to use her trait, which has five random buffs. These go between the feet with the boots, these go with her gauntlets, they go with her lasso, and they go with her shield, and there's one more, I can't immediately think of it, it might be the sword. The point is that the trait now actually acts randomly when you activate it, and if you want access to something like the air dash, you have to get the boot modifier with the trait. A lot of Wonder Woman now is going to be changing your playstyle on the fly when you activate trait, but this thing does recover very quick. It pops down and then pops back up to give you another buff. So usually, or the greater majority of the time, you're gonna be sitting on a one to fifth buff of some kind with Wonder Woman that is gonna modify that move as not do more damage or more range or give you more mobility and things like that, which drastically changes the way the character plays from the first game, which is a good thing. And I only wish we saw changes like this for the entirety of the roster and not just Wonder Woman, but it's cool to see nonetheless, and I'm very curious to see what they're gonna do with other characters that we have been seeing that are coming back from the first Injustice game, and notably Aquaman, because Aquaman has been missing from everything, and he was a part of the very first bits of media that showed up for Injustice 2. We saw his super, we saw his gameplay, and we saw his face and it definitely looked a little strange. We do know a lot of the characters' faces have gone through some pretty dramatic changes, and I made a video about that a little while ago. And Netherrealm has been pretty quiet on a lot of stuff up until just recently, making me think that they were going through some pretty huge graphic overhauls in terms of the facial mocap and how faces are lit and the overall structure of character faces, especially because if you look at the latest Watchtower stream on the character selection screen, you see Aquaman, and that definitely looks a lot different different from what I remember. 
Although, to kind of counter-argument myself, Superman does have what seems to be a much different face in his character profile picture, too, and we just got a story trailer that shows off a whole bunch of Superman talking directly into the camera with his big face, and it does look a little different from this character profile art. I think they have done a lot of stuff with the character visual appearances since the first reveal of the game kind of back at E3 and a couple months after, so all that time, I think, is going into character polish and face lighting and everything else like that because Wonder Woman is the perfect example of what something can go to to what it is now and it's looking pretty good. As long as Catwoman kind of drops 20 years of age, I think everyone would be pretty happy. Other than that, that's about it for now. Injustice 2 is going to have more updates and more characters and we're getting another reveal that's coming up next week. So stay tuned for that, guys. Other than that, I can't wait for Swamp Thing. He's definitely going to be one of the first characters I start playing and I hope he I hope he's good. I just hope he's not super low tier and even if he is, I hope he's just very fun to play because he looks really fun just from the gameplay alone. As always, dudes, thank you a ton for watching. Appreciate any thumbs up on the video. As always, I'll be back with more Injustice 2 updates as soon as possible. My name is Max, and I'll see you next time. Swamp.